Good evening. My name is Anupama Rao, and I'm the Associate Director of the Institute for Comparative Literature and Society. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you to this evening's program on behalf of the Institute and its director, my dear friend and colleague, Lydia Liu. This evening inaugurates and celebrates the launch of a two-year project funded by the Andrew Mellon Foundation on the topic of global language justice. Our project attends to a number of questions. We're interested in understanding the social effects of English monolingualism, the relationship of language and technology, the problem of translation across disciplinary divides, and new possibilities for reviving language uh, communities at the interface of arts activism, legal redress, and digital technologies. But at its core, the project addresses the life and death of languages. It attends to the possible extinction of a world made rich with meaning and signification as akin to environmental catastrophe, as approximating a world denuded of the many forms of life, survival, and creative repurposing that constitute ecologies and infrastructures of inhabitation the world over. Global language justice thus goes beyond the question of rights, inequality, and access, though we are interested in all of these issues, to pose fundamental concerns about ethical life in the face of catastrophe. Our project asks how we might attend to the world around us with care in the aftermath of horror, violence, and daily assaults on human dignity. Our project could not be more urgent. It needs little reminding that these are difficult and fragile times when those who value the word, who value the vital, life-making possibility of poetic speech, are themselves at risk. Poetic speech, the making and breaking of tongues, and poetry's capacity to reimagine the world we share with others is thus all the more necessary. We need both. We need poetry's capacity to humanize and teach, but we're also transformed by its powers to shock, its capacity to bear witness to otherwise unspeakable horror and brutality. The term pluriverse thus calls up difference and singularity, many and one, you and I and everyone else. It resists the call to standardize, to homogenize, and to instrumentalize the words we use as if these were so many self-guided missiles finding their target. Words made to order every word in its place, existing merely to suit its purpose. Instead, pluriverse calls up insurgence. It's rowdy, it revels in the sensuous, tongue-twisting, meaning-making, meaning-breaking power of words. It holds accountable those who use our words against us, by giving us the power to use our words to tell a different story and to imagine other endings. Language must think then with and against extinction, annihilation, and catastrophe. Let me give two examples. In the documentary, What Happened to You, Miss Simone, we hear the singer Nina Simone mourning the father of black love, Martin Luther King Jr. They are killing us one by one, she says. Another recently released documentary on James Baldwin, I Am Not Your Negro, commemorates the assassinations of three of his close friends, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, and Medgar Evers. The poet Claudia Rankine describes this as a present haunted by memories of devastated black lives and a psyche structured by waiting and witnessing where one either mourns untimely death or anticipates further violent deaths. She names it, and I quote, an ambient feeling that at any given moment, a black person is being killed in the street or in his home by the armed hatred of a fellow American. Memorializing lost lives thus exerts a force upon the living and requires that we bear witness to a history that implicates everyone and spares no one. Now let me take you to another moment and recall another native son Dalit, or ex-untouchable leader and Columbia graduate, B.R. Ambedkar. On October 14, 1956, less than two months before he died, Ambedkar converted to Buddhism in a public ceremony together with 600,000 followers. 
by activating the historical memory of Buddhism's disappearance in the very land of its birth. Ambedkar was also reclaiming Buddhism as an agonistic historic force. The language of the text he wrote shortly before he died, the Buddha and his Dhamma, is markedly different from Ambedkar's earlier writings. The Buddha and his Dhamma registers Ambedkar's experience of tiredness with the social science mode of reasoning, one that many of us, including myself, inhabit. By giving up a certain kind of language, he was also giving up the system that gave birth to it, caste and untouchability. This is a bearing witness by letting go, by claiming social exit. We could have gone about curating our kickoff in any number of ways. We could have held another academic conference, symposium, or a workshop, Lydia and I. But what we're doing this evening better respects our own ambitions and energies for global language justice. Because this is a project to come, an arena to be imagined into being, for no such field exists. What better way to do so than by honoring the work and the words of poets who have transformed the way we see and hear the world? We would be here all evening if I was to introduce each of them to you. Each is a profound thinker and a dreamer. So I would merely name them here in the order in which they will read for eight to 10 minutes. They will, read the they will read in the language in which they write. English translations are available in your program. Ann Waldman, Raul Zurita, Shadmishta Mohanty, Bei Dao, Orlando White, Jayo Ming, Mohammed Beniz, Dauda Indaye, and Nobonita Debsen. But before they do, we're very pleased to also have with us this evening Provost and Dean of Faculty and Claire Tao Professor of Economics at Barnard, Linda Bell, and EVP and Dean of Faculty and Arts and Sciences and Professor of Statistics at Columbia, David Madigan. This event would not have been possible without their extensive support, the guidance and support of the Dean of Humanities and the Dean of Social Sciences at Columbia, and the many units across the university who have enabled this event to take place. They're all noted on your program. Last but not least, Sarah Monks, our assistant director at ICLS, deserves the deepest appreciation for all that she has done. I hope that we can put our hands together in applause for her and everyone else who made possible this evening's and tomorrow's events. This will also serve to welcome Provost Bell and Dean Madigan, each of whom will offer words of welcome before we begin the readings. We will not break between the poets so as to make it possible for you, our audience, to experience this evening to the fullest. Please join me in welcoming our poets and thank you very much for being with us this evening. Thank you so much, Anupam. Thank you. And it's a great honor to be with this August company and uh, so eager to hear the poetry this evening and the conversations and the uh, continuing poetry tomorrow at Poets House. This is a piece that came out of protest in the streets of New York uh, around the tower that sometimes dominates our city. So it's just an excerpt from a longer text entitled Trickster Feminism. And I also wanted to note the passing of uh, beloved poet John Ashbery and others who have passed recently, Kate Millett, Ulo, Ulo Dido, uh, poet Jack Collum, poet Joanne Kiger. So they're very much uh, with me in these days. Denouement. And the day would be proud of itself going on as if it hadn't already collapsed, had not been destroyed, riven, all the people mad and metabolically downcast. It's around the eyes, they said. It's around the hearts. The city was reeling. People were coming out to the street in the way they wanted to see where the big guy lived and boasted so as to mock the event. It wasn't over. It wasn't going to rest. The guy was not real as the day, as the year, the century, the epic shared was not real. The tribulation he ensued was not real, but it was that affect that mattered. What would suffer? 
It was the warmest year on record, as if that wasn't enough to make some idiot pause and pausing resist and if resisting insist on being heard and calibrated so that measures were taken round the clock, ice caps photographed, melting and all the rest, a pole away from accountability. How ugly would it go? Resistance had to resist. And it had already happened if you stopped to think someone had gotten up and walked this far and then paused to take stock for the last time. It was the last time the human had a chance, the last one to be observant and cry and stomp and take stock and be like something that was the something that had melted. Oh, no, and if healing would ever be that, it would be theater, a spectacle, come pay, like the kabuki you just saw, imitating the resolution between a sword and a fox, a country and its honor. The last straw of honor broken on its back, and blue was invoked in the silk scarf that draped the emperor's chair where he sat timeless and waiting for the play to begin. We were it, played upon. But could that be true and yet be denouement with hope still streaming in beneath the surface? And then was it dark applause from all the centuries come raining down? Looked into my crystal ball, what did I see? Drones over Jordan coming after me, singing the crimes of man. I've got those Anthropocene, Anthropocene blues. Looked into the crystal ball, what did I see? Cadres of human beings taking to the streets, cadres of humans changing the frequency. Waking up to the Anthropocene, Anthropocene blues. In the mind of end time, it looks like this. Shell, Balut, Tabriz, Aleppo, Kabul, eddies and tides. When you wake, observe the unmitigated trials and tribulations of these tossed things. Random, it seems. But in the end, time is waiting. Less personhood, more ransom, radical sleep in the end time. There is no end of sleep. Multiplying the stars was never easy in end time, doing it by themselves, stars in the end time, things static then still. Would you kill another literary form? A ransom, perhaps saying again, the dead will be saying again, too many dead, too many dead, carrying the corpses around in the mind of the end time, no substitutes. But if you care to try your hand, you may gamble all you have to offer, and what would that be? A mole might do for you, a burrowing thing might do, biding time might do, a night perhaps then you are released, recant, reflect, review, reach out. We have met the enemy and he is the psychotic karmic flow of our own blowback. Own that view, toughen up, you keep churning. There's an echo in the void, need more, stronger, better leadership, need an experienced cop. He's a baby in the end time. There are theories of dysfunction, delicate wheel works that need tread. End times, you wait for me in the mind of the end time. Scott free isn't possible. No interpretation necessary for your cargo, but a tax and a search and a fee and a calibration, what it all adds up to. Then drop it, drop it down, send it off, off world. May it disintegrate in peace. We've met the enemy, the psychotic flow of our own Blow back. Shadow behind eclipse for John Ashbury. When he died, a temperature went down. Trees in the sky above flat irons, tremor there. Oh, didn't, then did see. We were driving in the canyon moons ago when he had said then, closing in, fool for this love. He was our drumming ritual if you were a berserker and willed by constellations. He was our prize for being born this world through school time, through bliss, through saltiness in the question, can gentlemen do without? Never retreat from scrutiny or miss the enemy, burnt leaf smell like resin. He was our fear of a sentence, half dreamed if we couldn't seize the whole. He was our vessel, cave and boot, train ride to the province, meandering by river, panic to be left out of this landscape, a picnic, whole tome memorized, many colors. He was our vanguard of non-self, scent and doubt. 
of deep carriage into the unknown. What do you know of it if you know him not? When he did laugh, he did and muse. That was a blue eye special. He was putting things next to one another. You too somehow included. They, you, it, things didn't have to bond, but in poetry happen. And now listen to his voice with eyes gone wild for flowers, scratchy reel to reel, 1966, sacred fury of a primordial world, half managed garb on the sentence, a profile in the hallway, across all crystal neuro pathways. Mirror, mirror, up to nature, and we had a glimpse. He was our respite, midnight excursions, off limits, sometimes a candle at the brain, wondering, fallen star? What rhymed with it? Espoir, hope? Blood, heart, held supine. He was our cosmography in a better world you could count on. Relief, release. And I'll end with a chant. Uh, it's called Chen Rezig Walks Among Us. Chen Rezig is the Tibetan word for the Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara. And the name means in both languages looking down with sounds upon suffering. So you hear the sounds of the people on this, in this worldly realm, and they're crying for assistance. And so the Bodhisattva is looking down and responding to this sound. Chen Rezig walks among us. Swept away all suffering, gathered it up in a quantum leap, sucked it up till it returned and when he looked back over his shoulder and saw all suffering all suffering filling the crannies and crevices and templates of the world sufferings and quarks and lepton sufferings, troubling minds of fathers, mothers, sisters, brothers, lovers, all sentient beings, suffering. Toxins of passion, aggression, ignorance. In the middle of the night, strapped in demon mind, nowhere to hide when all pounding suffering. Suffering rides in and mind splits in a thousand pieces. Chen Rezig wept and head split in a thousand pieces. And mighty red fire Buddha Amitabha leans and puts the puzzle back together, wires it with tantric thread and some, add some, add some extra arms, extra heads. This wisdom body to rid the world of all suffering. And now Chen Rezig had a thousand arms in all directions of space with numerous accoutrements. And under those arms, a thousand hearts better to banish all suffering, suffering, suffering. And put this puzzle back together. Now he had a thousand arms. He alights on emptying Europe, USA empty, Israel, Palestine empty, China, Russia, Syria, Japan, Haiti, Yemen, 11 heads, all these third eyes, more wisdom eyes in all the pores of the body. Chen Rezig walks among us, humble prince toward all systems of empire. He walks among us as all constituent forms, precious ink, diamond scepter, skull cup of blood, thigh bone trumpet, dissolve in mind, and lotus at his feet arises again through the cracks of a Concrete city or charnel grounds, eternal war, star flowers shoot at dark of a distant galaxy out of this world. His heart is that big and will relight the butter lamp gone out in panic of this dark age. Banish the syndicates of samsara, put away the texts of doom, turn the wheel again and again in our frail anthropocene, our capitalocene, Chen Rezig walks among us. No identity indoors yet, Bodhisattva 
Alphas are ever active, invisible, elf-swirling shamans, shape-shifting wizards, every hour dedicating the merit. No end time here, but aspiration to press harder. Don't tarry, don't tarry, keep trying, keep trying, sweep all soft. Suffering away all pockets of the multiverse. Keep thou with mudra, with mantra, every mala beat a thought for others. Golden thread of enlightening in every direction. And push, push against the darkness. 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 This was written in dedication to the Dalai Lama. Thank you so much. So, so we said that poetry is plural versus insurgent. So I think we'll ask Linda and um, David to come on now and just make a few welcome remarks um, and then we will continue with the readings if that's okay. Thanks, Linda. So f that was beautiful. Thank you very much. Um, it, it will feel sort of like a big come down to now hear a provost speak. So I apologize ahead of time, but after all, I gave Anu the opportunity to just wipe me off the agenda, but she decided to include me. So first of all, let me just welcome all of you we're thrilled to have you here. And um, what we just heard is testimony to really the power of words and the stature of the people that we have with us today. And congratulations to Anu and to Lydia and to Emily and Peter uh, for really putting together a fantastic program. It is a real pleasure to be here this evening to welcome you all to the inaugural event of the Mellon Foundation Sawyer Seminar for uh, global Language Justice. This is a fabulous event. I know that it will be a remarkable gathering and um, it will be an opportunity to explore some truly significant co topics together from the impact of English Mongol mono mon monolingualism <laughs> on our collective culture to the challenges and opportunities inherent in translation across languages and disciplines. And I'm certain that our special guests will shed tremendous light on this and on much more. As many in this room know, because you've been part of the story, Barnard has a long tradition of supporting poetry, especially poetry by women with varied voices from regions across the globe. And the college strives very hard to continue that tradition. We speak often and loudly about the power of the written word, to bring people together and to bridge what might seem like unbridgeable divides, and ever the more so. Our students are indeed very fortunate to follow in the footsteps, footsteps of a dynamic and diverse group of alumni. And Barnard has a proud tradition and history of producing extraordinary writers and poets. And so if you'll indulge me just a few minutes, I'll brag about a few with apology to those who I may uh, omit. There was Helen Hoyt who graduated from Barnard in 1909. Early in her career, she was an associate editor of the Journal of Poetry. Truly before her time, she used her poetry to reveal women's voices by exploring gender, the body, and nature. She once said, and I quote, at present, most of what we know or think we know of women has been found out by men. We've yet to hear what women will tell of herself and where she can tell more intimately than in poetry. Leone Adams graduated in 1923. She was best known for her lyric poetry, which captured the romantic and metaphysic periods. And then there were the beat poets, Joan Vollmer, class of 1943, who would gather with her friends in her apartment for all night soirees, uh, marathons of discussion. And Elise Cowan, class of 1956, whose poems were in fact never published during her lifetime. Alice Notley, Barnard class of 1967, was active in the New York poetry scene of the 1960s and 70s. Her work 
defies most classifications. She used gender-bending modes to explore the nature of the self and the importance, the singular importance of disobedience. And Tazaki Shange, class of 1970, award-winning playwright, poet, and novelist, best known for her play for color colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. Tori Dent, class of 1981, who was diagnosed with HIV at age 30, and her poetry dealt with the brutal, harsh realities of living with what was at that point a fatal illness. And Fatima Bhutta, class of 2004, Pakistani poet and writer. Following the assassination of her aunt, Benazar Bhutto, there was speculation that Fatima might enter politics. Instead, she chose to express her activism powerfully through writing. So from Helen Hoyt to today, their traditions live on the undeniable power of words and of poetry to ignite, incite, and bring us together. I wish you a wonderful uh, few days. Enjoy yourselves, and thank you. Um, thank you, Linda, and thank you for that extraordinary performance. That was incredible. I, 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 it was just mind-blowing. Um, I'll be very brief so that we can get to the real events of the evening, although I am going to read a poem. Um, um, so I'm, I'm David Madigan. I'm the Executive Vice President for Arts and Sciences. I'm um, thrilled to be here. I'm thrilled to help kick off this event. Um, it's been fabulous to work with Lydia and Anu, who, are, who have done you know, amazing work in, in, um, in the ICLS and, and in the context of this project, which is very exciting. Um, and has generated a huge amount of interest around the Columbia campus, the, the Language Justice Project. Um, so I want to, on behalf of Columbia University, I want to welcome the eminent poets and other distinguished guests who traveled, as I've learned, from all over the world uh, to be here tonight. Uh, we are thrilled um, that you're here, and it gives special meaning to the inauguration of the Sawyer, Se um, Sawyer Seminar on Global Language Justice. Um, I also want to thank the Andrew Mellon Foundation for the generous support of this, uh, this project, uh, this two-year project here at Columbia. So why are we talking about language justice here? Um, it's because language lies at the heart of what it means to be human. Uh, yet we learn from reports of the National Science Foundation and from UNESCO that 50% of the world's 6,000 plus languages are about to disappear by the end of the 21st century. So this is, this is paralleled only by the extinction of an alarming number of life forms on our planet. Columbia's Sawyer Seminar, um, and, and it's, I think, an extraordinarily kind of creative and, and brilliant idea to pursue, um, will we'll take language justice as the humanistic equivalent um, of environmental justice and investigate the possible linkages, convergences, shared planetary histories between biodiversity and linguistic diversity. I think it's just such an exciting project that has really grabbed the imagination of a, a large number of people around, uh, around this campus and, and around the world. Um, it'll be very interesting to see uh, where we end up two years from now. Poets have always had something to teach us about the, about the life and death of languages. If the poetic voice arises from the lived worlds of song and, and language communities, what will happen to human societies when we can no longer sing the song or form the emotional attachment to the rich traditions embodied by the plurality of poetic voices from around the world. Like, what will happen when those languages are, are no longer? Um, the great Chilean poet, Mr. Zarita, who I had the great pleasure of meeting, um, had this to say about poetry in, in Anna Dini's uh, beautiful translation. I quote, without poetry, it's possible that violence would be the norm, the steady state. But because poems exist, all violence is unjustifiable, is monstrous. Um, my own uh, particular e experience um, in growing up in Ireland um, during what they called the Troubles, um, you know, 30 plus years of, of horrible violence and horrible acts, um, you know, committed over and over. Um, Seamus Heaney was a, a shining light throughout that period um, and wrote some, you know, extraordinary words that I, I truly believe played a big part in, in you know, what we now have a, a fragile piece, but a piece nonetheless. <laughs> Um, so I just want to read a, a very short few words of, of Seamus Heaney that have, have um, stuck with me since, uh, since uh, I, I was a teenager, I think, when I, I first read these. And it was written at the height of the Troubles in the North when there were some you know, dreadful things happening. What do we say anymore to conjure the salt of our earth? So much comes and is gone 
that should be crystal and kept. Um, please join me in welcoming all the poets who are here to read their work um, and to support the cause of, of global language justice. Thank you very much. Buenas tardes. Dedico esta lectura a un poeta chileno que se acaba de morir y que yo quería mucho, Ronald Kay. Bruno se dobla, cae. Al frente las montañas emergen como una gasa de tul curvándose contra las sombras. La nieve de la cordillera fosforece levemente como una gasa que flota. Arriba las infinitas estrellas y el cielo negro. Las palabras son leves, las estrellas son leves. Escuché un campo interminable, margaritas blancas. Se doblan por el viento. Escucho el gemido de los delgados tallos al doblarse. El sonido es chirriante, agudo. Cuando el viento cesa, vuelve el silencio. Bruno, solo es una línea blanca que cae y se levanta. Arriba de la línea todo es negro y abajo también. Antes está la playa, lo sé. Después el mar hasta el horizonte. Y luego el cielo. La noche es una caja cerrada negra. Abajo la línea las rompientes suena y es blanca. Bruno era mi amigo. Las ciudades blancas son pequeñas en la noche. Adelante está el mar. Del sol se distingue la línea blanca de la espuma de las rompientes, el mar, la noche cerrada. Escucho el conejo encandilado frente a los focos. Arriba la gasa de la nieve de las montañas parece un tul que le fuera a caer cubriendo la pequeña mancha de sangre que ha emergido de su pelaje pardo. Los focos iluminan otros blancos, otros pequeños pelajes con sangre una pequeña mota roja de sangre cubierta con la gasa de nieve de todas las montañas. Susana es pequeña. La tierra que cubre a Bruno es negra. La cara de Bruno es blanca. Pero no sé si es tierra y no sé si es agua negra o es el aire negro. La cara de Susana también es blanca bajo el aire o el agua o la tierra negra. Escucho el sonido de las margaritas al doblarse. Susana es una amiga bajo el campo negro, las margaritas blancas. A pique el cielo negro cae sobre el mar, sobre el campo negro, sobre la nieve como gasa de las montañas. Arriba las estrellas se doblan al unísono, las margaritas bajo el viento. Las estrellas no emiten sonido alguno. Los tallos de las margaritas gritan y los oigo. Susana dice palabras bajo el campo, o el agua o la tierra. Recuerdo un pasaje de amor, de mar, sobre el horizonte. El cielo tiene una diafanidad infinita y escucho el silencio que se vuelve inmenso. Bruno era mi amigo. Susana ahora es miles de Susanas. El silencio me devuelve un camino de asfalto al lado de las montañas y al pequeño conejo encandilado, inmóvil. Me detengo y regreso. En el hocico tiene una leve mota de sangre, también en el pelaje del cuello. Casi no tiene peso en mis manos. Oigo el sonido de las margaritas al doblarse. Casi no pesa. Sus incisivos suavemente enrojecidos parecen chirriarle a la luna. Susana tiene los dientes apenas rojizos. Su boca abierta le enseña los dientes apenas rojizos a la luna, como un chirrido. En la imaginación redacto cartas devastadas de amor. Tanto su muerte desaparecido. Ahora Zurita me largó, ya que de puro verso y desgarro te pudiste entrar aquí, en nuestras pesadillas. Tú puedes decirme dónde está mi hijo, a la paisa, a las madres de la Plaza de Maya, a la agrupación de familiares de los que no aparecen, 
a todos los tortura, países chilenos, palomos del amor y asesinos. El canto a su amor desaparecido. Canté, canté de amor. Con la cara toda bañada canté de amor y los muchachos me sonrieron. Más fuerte canté, el sueño puse, la pasión, la lágrima. Canté la canción de los viejos galpones de concreto. Unos sobre otros decenas de nichos los llenaban. En cada uno hay un país, son como niños, están muertos. Todos yacen allí, países negros, África y Sudacas. Yo les canté así de amor la pena a los países. Miles de cruces llenaban hasta el fin el campo. Entera su enamorada canté así, canté el amor. Fue el tormento, los golpes y en pedazos nos rompimos. Yo alcancé a oírte, pero la luz se iba. Te busqué entre los destrozados, hablé contigo. Tus restos me miraron y yo te abracé. Todo acabó, no queda nada. Pero muerta te amo y nos amamos, aunque esto nadie puede entenderlo. Ay, grandes glaciares se acercan, grandes glaciares sobre los techos de nuestro amor. Es ronca, gritó mi lindo, los dinosaurios se levantan, los helicópteros bajan y bajan, donde yacen los viejos galpones, las paredes muy altas con torres de televisión. Tú podrías aparecer en las pantallas, o oh sí, amor. En mis sueños enciendo el dial y allí apareces en blanco y negro. Digo, ese es el chico que yo soñaba, ese es el chico que yo soñaba. Cuando despierto, solo hay heridos en un largo patio y cueros cabelludos colgando de las antenas. Oigan, amigos, les grité, esas épocas ya pasaron, solo se rieron de mí. Marcaron a los muchachos y a bayonetazos les cortaron el pelo. Fumas marihuana, aspiras neopren, ¿qué mierda fuma, rojo asqueroso? Pero son lindos, aún así yo me arreglo de verlos. Mojo la cama y fumo, yo me enamoro de ellos, me regio y me pinto entera, envuelta en lágrimas los saludo, pero todos sueñan hoy el sueño de la muerte, sí, lindo chico. Grandes glaciares vienen a llevarse ahora los restos de nuestro amor, grandes glaciares vienen a tragarse los nichos de nuestro amor, las nicherías están una frente a las otras, de lejos parecen bloques, todo lo vi mientras me daban, pero me viré y mi guardián no pudo retenerme. Allí conocí los colores y vi al verdadero Dios gritando entre los helados galpones de concreto, aullando entre los fantasmales galpones de concreto, mojándome entera de entre los imposibles galpones de concreto. Mula chilena me insultaba a mi madre, ya llegará también tu hora. Me viré por muchos lugares y vi a mis viejos sin salir de allí. Son como Dios, pero ellos no saben que su cachorra se está muriendo amor y golpes en las barrigas de los galpones. Ahora me buscan pobres viejos ateridos, preñándonos de gruesos escupitajos. Juntos, jóvenes y viejos, reventaremos. Hay amor, reventaremos. Hay amor, reventaremos. La generación sudaca canta folk, baila rock, pero todos están muriendo con la vista vendada en la barriga de los galpones. En cada nicho hay un país, están allí, son los países sudamericanos. Grandes glaciares vienen a recogerlos. Blancos glaciares, si hermanos, sobre los techos se acercan. Murió mi chica, murió mi chico. Desaparecieron todos. Desiertos de amor. Hay amor. Quebrados caímos y en la caída lloré mirándote. Fue golpe tras golpe, pero los últimos ya no eran necesarios. Apenas un poco nos quedamos, arrastramos entre los cuerpos caídos para quedar juntos, para quedar uno al lado del otro. No es duro ni la soledad, nada ha sucedido y mi sueño se levanta y cae como siempre, como los días, como la noche. Todo mi amor está aquí y se ha quedado, pegado a las rocas, al mar y a las montañas, pegado, pegado a las rocas, al mar y a las montañas. Recorrí muchas partes, mis amigos sollozaban dentro de los viejos galpones de concreto, los muchachos aullaban, vamos, hemos llegado donde nos decían, le grité a mi lindo chico, goteando de la cara me acompañaban los señores, pero a nadie encontré para decirle buenos días, solo unos brujos con Mauser ordenándome una bien sangrienta, yo les dije, están locos, ellos dijeron, no lo creas, solo las cruces se veían en los viejos galpones cubiertos de algo, 
de un bayonetazo me cercenaron el hombro y sentí mi brazo al caer al pasto y luego con él golpearon a mis amigos. Siguieron y siguieron, pero cuando les empezaron a dar a mis padres corrí al urinario a vomitar. Inmensas praderas se formaban en cada una de las arcadas, las nubes rompiendo el cielo y los cerros acercándose. ¿Cómo te llamas y qué haces? Me preguntaron. Mira, tiene un buen cul. ¿Cómo te llamas buen culo? Bastarda chica, me preguntaron. Pero mi amor ha quedado pegado a las rocas, al mar y a las montañas. Pero mi amor, te digo, ha quedado herido a las rocas, al mar y a las montañas. Ellas no conocen los malditos galpones de concreto. Ellas son. Yo vengo con mis amigos, soy osando. Yo vengo de muchos lugares, fumo y pongo con los chicos. Es bueno para ver colores pero nos están cavando frente a las puertas. Pero todo será nuevo, te digo, sí, lindo chico. Claro, dijo el guardia, hay que arrancar el cáncer de raíz, o sí, o sí. El hombro cortado me sangraba y el olor raro la sangre. Dando vueltas se ven los dos enormes galpones, marcas de TNT, guardias y gruesas alambradas cubren sus vidrios rotos. Pero a nosotros nunca nos hallarán porque nuestro amor está pegado a las rocas, al mar y a las montañas, pegado, pegado a las rocas, al mar y a las montañas, pegado, pegado a las rocas, al mar y a las montañas. Murió mi chica, murió mi chico, desaparecieron todos, desiertos de amor. Canto de amor de los países. ¿Te acuerdas, chileno, del primer abandono cuando niño? Sí, dice. ¿Te acuerdas del segundo, ya a los veintitantos? Sí, dice. ¿Sabes, chileno y palomo, que estamos muertos? Sí, dice. ¿Te acuerdas entonces tu primer poema? Sí, dice. Dice sí. Dice sí. 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 La. La, la, la noche canta, 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 canta. Ella canta, canta, canta bajo la tierra. Aparece entonces, levántate nueva entre los paisitos muertos, chilenos somosas, karatecas y traidores. Lárgale y devuelve su vuelo y su canto. Al que solo por el amor de ustedes, paisa, vuela, canta y toma forma. Si devuélvenselo a este, el más poeta y llorado, desaparecido del amor. Palo muy malo, sí dice, y así son entonces el canto su amor de desaparecido. Muchas gracias. Make broadness, broadness from narrowness, lead, lead us. We see nothing behind, nothing ahead. These worlds are broad above, beyond our knowing. The great river plains open and descend slowly from west to east, beyond our knowing us. Doctor, suture me from narrowness to broadness, all the suns, all the dawns, all the waters rise and pass in broadness. Our bodies move over, over this land, rising and falling. Broadness stretch out our skies and dawns so we can walk, walk out of ourselves. Doctor, move me from dark spaces of invented light. I do not know just what it is that I am like. Broadness open for us, us. Unharness our days 
Let all boundaries be distant so we can wander far in our unknowing. Greeneries as long and winding as the shores from which we look at the lit ocean. Behind us, the fertile land, rivers coming to the sea, silt. Behind us, thousands of years, the vertebrae compressed, the spine bending forward forever. Behind us, offerings of fire held in falcons with outstretched wings, built brick by brick, flight abandoned, vanished in unpredictable encounters. Before us, rusted barges, the daily fragrance of spices and oil, a fatigued infinity of sea and sky. What can I go towards? Remote acts, fires kindled on empty clearings, sloping towards the east, the chanted word, vigilant thought, dispersed, astral distance wedged in the spinal cord, behind us a broad land grown narrow at its very end. A snake eats a minor head first. Yellow legs extend from the snake's filled mouth. Cattle bellow tethered to ancient trees. Dung fills the tall grass. Thunder strikes at the humid air. There is no eye in the breath. Roots wind through fallen leaves. The terror of an owl smashes into a tree trunk, loses a wing, drops below into dried weeds. There is no eye in the breath. The seasons are muscular and original. What should I speak? Thunder strikes again and again. What is real must be harvested each day and threshed and ground, put through fire, then eaten. What should I imagine in this place where we become? Our sight is made from our seasons. Bring us the rain. The clearing, I, I the fire kindler and the fire, I, the animal untied and led away and choked, the offering, I, I, the hand and breath that stretches and extends, I, the ground of the universe. The pupil dilates in darkness to discern the undiscernible origins of things. The moving glint of precise cause, why a meteorite hits the earth, why we receive the debris of the universe, why the flawed act, the contorted feeling, the disfigured heart, the rinds and skins of being, release us from explanation. <clears throat> Bring us near, nearer, not further far. Take us close, closer. Unbuild us to soil, gravel, mud. Fold back the excess of cloth so we may weave again. Unmake us. A nocturnal sorrow opens over the great river plains. The falcon with a single wing flies alongside. 
move us from on fire to fire, return stone to the mountains, unstone us. The alcoholic stoops low on his plastic stool in the middle of a, the precarious alleyway, unsure our voices so we can listen sometimes. Make us many, the not one, and only then make us one, the not two. Take us away from calculations so there remain only near and distant, high and low, early and late, bara and abara, front and back, and the four directions.不要烟草病住呼吸冬日的音乐使来像褪色的旗帜是昨天的风悔恨如大雪般降落当一块石头裸露出结局我以此刻痛哭余生再过一个名字我伪装成不幸遮挡母语的太阳夜正趋完美我在语言中漂流死亡的乐器充满了冰谁在日子的裂缝上歌唱水变火焰失血山猫般奔向星星必有一种形式才能做梦在早晨的寒冷中觉醒的鸟更接近真理而我和我的诗一起下沉书中的二月某些动作与阴影就地死亡总是从反面观察一幅画此刻我从窗口看见我年轻时的落日吹低人内心的呜咽睡收的天使们从画的反面归来从那些镀金的头颅一直到清点到落日战后从梦里蒸流的形象在天边一气旗帜
变成草浆，变成纸，那愈合书写伤口的冬天。The last one, uh, solitude, um, is translated uh, by Elliot Weinberger. <coughs>致敬给艾吉大雪剪纸中的细节火光深处的城市绕过垂地垂钓梦者的星星行船直急转急转急转行船直急急转弯处你用词语压舱，母亲的和歌，母亲的歌传遍四方。水壶中的风暴尖叫，家园在驶在驶离站台。打开你的窗户，此刻带领以往的日子，如大雁南飞。田野，你的悲伤，你排队。买油、煤油，和人们跃入黑暗。待喉咙的时代在呼喊，也许是命运，也许是小号的孤独。啊，嘹亮的时刻！俄罗斯母亲，是你笔下奔流的长夜，覆盖墓地的大雪，那等待砍伐的森林。有斧子的忧郁。亚特是埃，奥兰多外的是真的。نشت اجت قبل ها آلو نکه دن ابشش چین خشی نی دست چه آلو کی آنی دست نله تو ثکان ده ای سی دن نشا ای گوت آل دن نشله It begins at a diacritical spark. of breath and soma vowel stress nasal enunciation the tenors of existence. Ictus of in. Inside where person Ticks in utero. Like two. Rippling skin. Hitherto by way of sonus. In a moment, in accordance with vocabulary,
body forms. That single E long interval appends in muscular tube of na. Pronunciation marks are proof. of one's own cultural sentience. Those authentic reverberations above the cap height where breath pressures tongue against teeth Below the baseline where throat exhales the long accent vowel. In that moment, it echoes through <coughs> nose, quivers as phonemic air. The ogonic tickle of the Dark and back, throat hums, rubs to ridge, alveolar root of tongue. Looms toward teeth to feel sound one must oral from belly cough up soul pulp evidence Corporeal self. Paper milk. Newborn alphabet cries its vowels and the page nourishes them. A opens into a U, it becomes a tiny cup. Fills with paper milk, the E too unfurls to an O and nourishes on the colostrum of pulp. Thought attaches sound from motherese to thin sheet of white, form, a structure of feeling, an instrument of print means to foster the verso and recto will be the caretakers, the caretakers of our infant text as writing develops calcium to bring life to ink, letters become collagen of thoughts.
This is my last one. To one color. Use paper tweezers, pinch free the ink delicately like pin bones from a fish. Pull out stems, crossbars, ascenders, and descenders. Now place the page inside a crucible, fill with chlorine and bring to a boil. Add a measure of borax to help cleanse serif blotches. Place a lid atop of it, wait momentarily. When edges of type are anti-alias, the limits of language restrain. In the meantime, think of folio steam burns, its layers blistering lamp black, color fluid discharging and then liquid parching. Do not damage the surface. A smudge is immutable. Even its dense sentences and paragraphs should begin to degrade as the pulp loosens. Watch as the letter disarticulates from its baseline, like a pivotal joint unhitching from a spine through maceration. It's in that moment print attains a satori of blankness, permutes the paper of complete space. Yeah. Thank you. كلمات ينحتها نفس من غير شحوب كلمات توقظ في سلالة شهوتها بهجوم مجازات تتهددني كلمات تحشد وحدتها وتتوه كلمات تشرق خلف ستائر من كلمات ليدي يرفع هذا الظل سحابتها وغدا ستهاجر بين سراديبا كشفت لفراشتها والصمت هنالك منشغل يتضاعف في شعل الغنباز يقرب مني أمواتا عبروا من ذاكرة الكلمات لغة برق على ماء زبرجدة الحروف من غصن أسماء ستهبط نفحة تمضي إلى حيث النهاية لا نهايتها إلى حيث النشيد يفيض في لغة لنا من قبل ماتت أو تموت على لحاف تختفي بين الزوايا مثل منبوذ تطارده الكلاب لغة بها فتشت عن جسدي كهوفا تستلذ الأسرق الفضية بين يدين ترتعيشان بها نفسي يعيد إلي أقلاما ومحبرة سأثبت كلما حدقت فيك 
أحسست مقبرة بموتاها على بابي تئن تضج هل عثر النحيب على شق إلى حلقي وهل عكس الغريب وجها تمزق بين أزمنة السراب لغة توحدني بصحراء التي اتسعت مرددة حداء قوافل ليست مؤكدة تدثرني بنقش غائر في العري يومئ ثم يسقط قطرة بيضاء تسكرني رنين النون ينطق أنت مني جمرة وأنا التموج فيك لعلك كنت تهذي أنت أيتها اللغة بأي يد كتبتك عابرا أصغي لبرد الضاد بين جنازتين ومن هنا أعطى لأهلك كل هذا الموت كيف أعود منك وليس لي غير الهباء يظل يثقب وشاة الصمت في حلقي وفي ألم يقلبه الخراب لغة بها كنت اطلعت على سرائر شهقة في الغيب بها استقبلت ما يبلله اتقاد اللون في الأعضاء مقاطع نوبة العشاق أهلة حكمة تذوي ومحبرة وأقلام يذوب الليل في ليل على الأوراق لغة لها وجه البياض قل إن هذا الموت موت أنا نشيد لغة لنا أولي لعل جنازة في الحلق تودعني نوافذها لعل فراغ مرآة يلطخ ما تبقى من صدى الأسرار لعل يد الهواء تنام جنب دم يهججه البعيد لغة أنا أو لي تطل علي ثانية ونحن معا نصاحب نوبة العشاق سماء الموت نتف السحاب إذا توسع من مدارك أنت بين مسافتين وعند سطح النهر كنت تركت وجه اللوح يغمره الرنين بت إليك كواكب فاضت بها الأنهار والكلمات تغمض أيها الأحياء في حلقي أفتش عن مساقط نقطة هي ما يسر إلي كيف النهر يجذبني إلى طرق موزعة على حد الشكوك وقد عثرت علي أشلاء مسلمة لفتك الخوف للغة تورثني سماء الموت نهر له أنشأت فاتحتي طيور من صنوف الأزرق الفضي تقصدني وأنت هناك تبحث عن تكون قطرة في النهر تهبط كن جذادا أيها الزمن المبشر بالقتام وليس لي حلم أدافع فيه عن سرب من الكلمات لي لغة تردد لي سماء الموت مطر تساقط فوق ذاكرة مشوشة ولا سطح تنام عليه لي 
لغة تطل على سماء الموت. Thank you. Chu 男人都喜欢这样的宝贝年轻但头发已花白为什么那么多老的丑的脏的男人要趴在他的肚子上他只在夜里计算看报纸是我一直在想Gadai, gadai rek deke gadai, gadai benek fu amul dai, gadai bemana sori gadegi, gadai bemana dau kadegi, gadai kadega nyu siare, gadai gede lenu tasare, gadai baho wurem reu. Gadai rek bany kule yew. Gadai bafar tabi chidun. Gadai bafar nyela khanyop dundu. Gadai dundu fasa giru dundu. Gadai defar sa gentu bai. Gadai degel sa gentu yai. Gadai rek deke gadai. Gadai banek fo amul dai. 
wutkati wurus dori kur ci suf su sel sufus afrik sinu war cenjal ben suf sinu meñ ëmb wurus ay jana xa ngi lëñ ba ti sey butit di noy xet gu bon gi ci ban bi ci sa peggi dex yi le jum yu natax ha nga fay meñ lak ci sen bir xal yu yanj dekk ba ngay lak butit njuru kayam yole ko yalla wurus di di sopi wurus dende koy ba mel dori kur ci sussu sel sufus afrik sinu war cenjal ben xuri wurus ya ngi ñuy nebb jant bi xolu gone ma ngi gis ci li wex sa peru bat marakhum natalu kharno bi gone gi ci jalu mbalit bi gone gi ci gent yu neex yi dama la bëgg sampal dalu xeer ci xelu mak mi naax ngir ñu mëna yëmu ci malay xon wi lal ci gantax gi ci sa peru bat ma ngi lay seen ngay ku wet fañu la tej ak mbugal yu metti yi nit sakku merci Excuse me, I'm reading a poem which is not translated, but you can just listen to it. Shada Paki. Shada paki ore shahore, jan lai pata pata ay akash akashe jan la shahore. Shada paki na che, mater meje, patol pukar na ter meje, pata ay akash akashe jan la jan lai pata shahore. Shada paki na che, na che paki na che, patol pukar na ter matete shahore. Ore shada paki, shada paki ore, shada paki bada shahore. Hai pata paki, idur chidur hata badi chata. Chadur madur, ranna banna akash alna, bhejal jalna shahore. Ore baka, ore shada paki, paki chai paki, shada paki, madha shahore, khada shahore, khali paki, khaka shahore, baka shahore. This is about... creative imagination in the image of a bird and uh, and a um, city in the city in the urban situation alphabets protidin ratri ne mele ami take khujari ami tar chokhe chok rakhi sokal holei fer dui chokhe sanshar joray ure jay okkorer pake the years 
ফার্স্ট বয় কিছুই হয়নি যেন এই ভান করে হৃৎপিণ্ড কুড়িয়ে নিয়ে ধুলোবালি থেকে ঝেড়ে ঝুড়ে ব্লাউজের ভিতরে ঢুকিয়ে ছুপি ছুপি লেখা হলো বছরের প্রথম কবিতা এইবার তাহলে একটা চুমু দাও মগজের সব কথা শুনেছি As long as I live in poetry, this is. Jato kaal kobitae baachi. Bichi thako, phute thako. Amog passport chobi hoye. Prottek line tumi jegi thako. Aakon tu cheshtar moto. Chati bacha jantro na amar. Phute thako. Lukiye thako na. Jato kaal kobitae baachi. মেক আপ ইউর মাইন্ড তুমি মনস্থির করো কাকে চাও তাকে না আমাকে তুমি মনস্থির করো কাকে চাও আমার মাঝখানে আছে দুজন মানুষ তুমি মনস্থির করো কাকে চাও তাকে না আমাকে হোম ঘর বার বার প্রণয় সম্ভবা বার বার বিরয় সুন্দর কবিতার জন্য তুমি বুঝি বার বার দুঃখ খুঁজে নাও বার বার কবিতার জন্য ভাঙো ঘর কম্বাসন ফুলকি আগ্নেয় মালার মতো স্বপ্রতিভ অক্ষরের মালা স্পর্শ মাত্র ছাই There are three small poems which I have brought, which I want to read to you because they were written in English. I'll read them in the original. Before that, I'll read one more poem. Acrobat. Madari. Shibibi che. Muji khub shundor madari khala jane. ধোয়াতে সময় কে নিয়ে লোপালুপি এখন তখন দুটোই নাচাবে দু উঠোতে হেঁটে যাবে দৌড়ির ওপরে সে ভেবেছে সব কিছু পারে জীবনে একবারই শুধু দৌড়ি কেঁপে ওঠে It's a very old poem, so written in 1971. Name. How magical my name sounds, ringing in the air like a bell. When rounded off so carefully from her warm lips, it floats up and away. A rainbow bubble, flawless, distant, then disappears, like a private thought. One 
that you wish had never existed. Memories of a floral clock. Standing still by the nameless road, I hear this violence of rain beating on the panes, growing dark. Switching off the engine is not switching off memory. Your eyes, the floral clock, <coughs> survive the rain, and your tongue, the unseen pendulum, keeps ticking away deep inside me, telling time, telling time, telling time, under the soil. And last one, words. Some words have a train of handmaidens. <coughs> Their delicate gowns trailing behind fragrant associations. And every now and then, a word suddenly calls up a whole battalion of its own private army, declaring war upon me, unarmed and helpless. I put up a poor fight, only to be torn apart. Words, and I a thousand deaths at your hand, and each perfect <laughs> resurrection is conducted with skill, a game that life plays with words or without them. Thank you. concludes um, our evening's readings. Thank you very, very much for being with us, and I hope um, these beautiful words and voices are ringing in your ears as we leave for the evening. Thank you again, and um, I'd like to just offer a big round of applause for all of our poets this evening before we disband. A great honor to have had you all here. Um, so thank you, um, all of you in the audience, for coming. We'll resume tomorrow with a closed-door workshop that will happen through the course of the day on the Columbia campus. And for those of you who are staying on for dinner, that will be upstairs. Thank you.